I think what it's supposed to be is that it stops time for the water. So it'll literally completely stop and it'll be, don't know if you can say solid, but you know, it'll, it'll stop moving and you can jump down and you'll wind up walking through this little tunnel under the water and you can see like fish, um, just, you also get lightning and near the end, this thing called good lightning, it literally heal those raised from the dead in the service of good, but also drain your own life because you were resurrected by Zarek. Inadvertently so, but still. Now you need this in the last level because to fight off the skeletal hordes of Zarek, you use your own uh, army of skeletons. I don't know the exact specifications of it, but somehow the chalices you collected, souls from there, I don't know, don't ask me to explain it, I don't know that it makes complete and perfect sense, but anyway, you wind up with, I think, as many skeletons on in your army as Zarek has, and it, it's it's so hilarious, when, when you like walk up there, you've got the, the chalice, and Zarek is like doing this big, evil, cackling speech, and near the end, he like he notices and he says, "Good God, Fortescue, what is that? Your lucky cap." So you you have this army, and if you don't help them, they're gonna lose. So you have to zap them to heal them gradually, and it'll cost you health yourself. So you can't do it all the time, and you have to make sure that your side wins this fight. After which, uh, Zarek, after a couple of unsuccessful attempts, I think one of them he turns into a goat or a chicken or something, he says, maybe later. And he, you know, he comes out as a dragon. Oh, at, at first he sends like his, um, this knight, this dark knight. I'm Batman. And then he comes out as a dragon. Now, it's not that tough of a fight, I'll grant you that. Anyway, after that, you know, you've won and he'll turn back into himself. And he like goes, you know, if I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. And he has this like trident, things like Poseidon, you know. And that's what he uses to shoot off the magic. So he like stands in place and just fires it straight up and fires it straight up. And you know, the, the cave is coming down around you, like big chunks. And Daniel's like, uh-oh, this is going to be bad. And then happens what obviously has to happen Zarek himself is, of, of course, crushed because he was firing straight up. He wasn't firing, like, off to the side or something. He was firing straight up. Sooner or later, that has to dislodge the thing right above him, and he's crushed by it with this wonderful, like, this wonderful sound that's like, you know, those things you use in New Year with the thing. Yeah. Now, the game's not perfect, I'll admit to that. There's one level, for example, where you're basically fighting wave after wave of enemies, and it doesn't really make sense, you know, it's it's that, it's like those uh, older games where basically everywhere you go there's just an enemy waiting for you, and they'll appear in waves after waves, once you've killed those, you get to proceed to the next area, that's how it is in the level, and I'll admit, that's not exactly, I mean, at that point in game making, and of those sort of games, that wasn't something you should really have to stoop to because it doesn't really, you know, there's no story behind it. It's just, you know, it's this mental institution and you're just fighting off waves after waves of them and just, yeah. But on the whole, it's definitely fun. It doesn't really remind me directly of, I mean, it sounds like something Tim Burton could have made up, but, you know, it's not like you're saying, oh, that's like, insert Tim Burton movie title here, you know. And the gameplay might not have been anything special, but it was fun, you know. It generally wasn't frustrating. It was reasonably challenging. The puzzles weren't bad. The graphics were good for the time. The voice acting was pretty good. The plot was great. I gotta say, I liked it a lot, and still do. And I wouldn't necessarily say we needed a sequel, but I guess you know, if one was made and it was good, that would somewhat be okay. Unfortunately, what happened was that one was made and it wasn't good. 
How does it suck, you ask? Let me count the ways. Let's start with the concept. I don't know at what point exactly it was decided, but presumably pretty early, that they, they were gonna move the story ahead some. And, you know, as far as Daniel goes, that works. You know, he was dead for a for hundred years before the first one started. He could have been dead for 500 years before the second one did. 500 years? I'm sorry, the first one was gothic. The gothic style was something that was used around the Middle Ages, among other things, to design churches. It ended before... I mean, this this takes place in like 1800 and something, like near the end of 1890 something. You know, in 1890 something, I think, or 1790 something, the gothic style was over by then. For crying out loud, we haven't gotten past the time it was set, and you're already going against the title. Now medieval makes no sense. It's no longer set in the Middle Ages. It's no longer gothic. What next? You're going to strip Daniel entirely of what dignity he had left when he woke up after a hundred years of death in the first one by making him do, I don't know, charades and Mr. Bean voice when he talks? Yes. Yes, you are. So it starts out in London in modern times, and this wannabe socialite and his two stupid thugs use Zarek's spellbook and raise the dead. We haven't gotten past that yet, we're gonna go with raising the dead, okay. On the plus side, now when you chop at the zombies, they do actually like lose limbs and such. That's a little bit cool. And the graphics are of course an upgrade from the first. There's also this nice new feature where you can take off your head, which makes good enough sense because, you know, it it's the next step from the whole, you know, he's dead and, you know, he doesn't have a tongue, he doesn't have a jaw and can still talk, all that. You take off the head, put it on um, these little green hands, you know, th thing from the Adams family. These were already there running around in the first one, just, you know, for atmosphere. Now, they'll, you know, you can use them by putting on, and you can move around the body, so the two can be doing something different at the same time. You can try to see if you've properly set up something with the body, and you can switch back and forth between them easily. And it makes for some decent puzzles, I'll admit that. I also think the puzzles, their difficulty rises a bit, and that's of course okay, because it's a sequel, you want it, you know, you want it to be a little bit bigger, maybe also tougher. The problem is, several of these puzzles just seem to be there to frustrate the player. I don't get that. I know that a lot of like old games have this thing where you know they'll be really really tough and you know then if you do really well you get the high score and just I don't know it's this weird S&M relationship between game developers and hardcore gamers and I don't get that. I don't get it's escapism, okay? I mean, games didn't comment on s stuff until, you know, much later with, you know, like System Shock 2. Probably the first one, haven't played it, would love to. Deus Ex, the first one. The second one, don't get me started. But whatever, you know, whatever floats your boat, if you all are happy about it, then that's fine. But yeah, you'll literally have, like, just taken your head off and put it on a hand, and immediately this obnoxious little creature will jump up on your on your bare neck and, you know, try to take you over, and then you can't perfectly control um, I think, yeah, it does basically control how you walk then, and you have to press uh, X repeatedly really fast to get it to come back off, and it won't hurt you a lot, but it's just irritating, you know, it's just obnoxious, and it's not fun, it's not challenging, it's not entertaining in the least, it's just there to tick us off.